During physical exam assessment, when we're looking at evaluation of range of motion, uh, active range of motion here, then what it's important to look at is not only the overall gross range of motion, the number of degrees, but how that motion is apportioned throughout the region. Specifically, let's take a look at the thoracolumbar spine and sagittal plane extension. So normally what I would do when I'm having the client do extension is I would stabilize their pelvis and hold here, but I want to be able to point out a few things and Yoshiko is very good at moving her trunk without moving at the hip joint, so I don't need to stabilize her here. Uh, Yoshiko, can you put your hands in front, cross them in front so it's easier for the camera to see? It's typically stated that ideal range of motion for thoracolumbar trunk extension in the sagittal plane is 40 degrees. Yoshiko, would you go back into extension? Go ahead. Now, when you see a client go into extension like this and we say, oh, she has 40 degrees, uh, she's very healthy. If you see that the motion is all occurring at the lumbar region, go back to neutral so you're comfortable, then what this tells us is that the thoracic spine is not moving into extension and this creates two problems. One, if the thoracic spine is not being asked to move, it gets more and more rigid, more and more hypomobile. The second problem is that the lumbar spine will end up having to compensate and we will be using that more for the motion, so we will use it, overuse it, misuse, abuse it, and we will get more wear and tear and likely dysfunction and injury in time. Go back again the same way. And in the case of the lumbar spine, we will be jamming the facets together, and that can lead to facet syndrome, irritation, inflammation, and low back pain, as well as earlier degenerative changes, osteoarthritis. Back to neutral. So when we see that a client is favoring one region of the spine over another region, then it's important for both regions for us to try to correct this. Now, it might be that she has the ability to move in the thoracic spine. It's just that she's not aware kinesthetically how she's moving. So we might begin by just cueing them proprioceptively. Yoshiko, I don't care how much you go back, but I want you to hinge up high. Only move from up here. Go back there. And we see now we get more extension up in the thoracic region. Go back to a healthy posture there, neutral posture. But if we still don't see enough extension here, then we might need to go over to manual therapy techniques to do joint mobilization, either grade four slow oscillations or a grade five fast thrust. Um, arthrofascial stretching is another name when it's done grade four. But one way or another, we might need to come into this area and introduce extension mobilization into the thoracic spine. So whenever we're evaluating thoracolumbar motion, do not just look at the gross number of degrees of motion, but also take a look at how it's apportioned. Are they moving one vertebra at a time? Are they articulating the entire spine or are they hypomobile in one region and compensatory hypermobile in the other? And if we can simply cue them for motion to learn this on their own, and perhaps with self-care exercises at home, wonderful. Or do we need to go to manual therapy techniques to introduce that motion?